Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Question. What would you do or how much simpler would your hijra be? That is the planning stage. If you had someone that can tell you what to expect when you got to where you're going or gave you some useful tips and advice before you go that you need to know before you go. If you follow the advice in this video, it's gonna make planning for your Hydra a little bit easier. It's also going to give you a better view of Hydra as you start to prepare. So in this video, I'm probably gonna talk about four things that Hydra will not fix. This is a very important topic because there are a lot of people who think that all I gotta do is just make Hydra and then everything will sort itself out. Everything will be fine. Allah, just let me get out of here. Just let me make Hydra. And then all this stuff will just fix itself. And I'm telling you from personal experience and from, from what I have observed with many, many Muslims who have made Hydra, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. You cannot go into Hydra with the mindset that it's going to fix whatever problem that you're currently having now. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, or the first thing that Hydra is not going to fix. If you're married and you're having marital problems, it's not going to fix your marital problems. It's not going to fix your marital problems. You're probably thinking that the reason behind all of the argumentation that you have and all of the situations, the problems and the, the, the strife and, and the fitting that you're having in your marriage right now is because you are surrounded by the kufar, you're living in the land of kufar, you know, the things around you aren't right, the Islamic environment isn't right, if I could just get out the country, if I could just get to the land of the Muslims and, if, and, and then we can be like, we got a space, we got some space, we can clear things, you know, we can, we can uh, get our heads clear. OK, we can now, you know, get some breathing room so we can start to work things out. That's not how Hydra works. And Hydra is not going to fix that. Before I go on to the other three, please do me a favor. Please like and subscribe to video so that others can get this access to this information as well. The second thing Hydra is not going to fix. And these are in no particular order. OK, uh, Hydra is not going to start to make you pray more. If you're not praying regularly, and what I mean by that is you have the opportunity to pray and you don't, okay? Or you are lazy with the prayer, or you are forgetful about the prayer. You're still praying, but you forget all the time. You um, wait until the, the time is almost over, and then by the time you decide to stop busying yourself with something else, then you make time for the prayer. It doesn't work like that. Yes, you will hear the avan in the streets, Everywhere you go in Dar Hijra, Allahu Akbar. You will hear the Inqama everywhere you go. In every place that you go to, in many places. I have prayed in shopping malls. I've prayed in grocery stores. I've prayed in the gym. I've prayed in the masjid. Okay, there's lots of places where people will carve out a niche to pray because prayer is a part of the society. And then if you look at the local people, and I have observed this, there are some people who don't pray even though they are literally footsteps away from the masjid. Local people and foreigners, they would just, especially in Saudi Arabia, they would just simply lock the door, cut the lights off. You can't do business during the prayer time. Okay, this is the last time I was there that was talk about removing that rule. But the, um, like the, they call them the, the religious police. I forgot the name of, of the, of the, uh, of the, body of government or body of municipality that handles this but they basically ride around and they make sure nobody's doing business during the time of the prayer okay this is in saudi in bahrain and other places everything is open as business as usual but in saudi it's like when the when the call to prayer is made right like maybe even five minutes before they're trying to rush you out the store because they don't want you in the store conducting business at the time of prayer or especially maybe at the time of the economy so they're going to make sure that they finish up whatever they got to finish up. Or, you know, if they're actually going to prayer, they're going to try to shoot you out of there. Hurry up, hurry up. You know, are you done? If not, you know, wait a few minutes until I come back. 
So there are people who are going to pray and there are people who are not going to pray. The reason why this is, the reason why the prayer is like that or the, the reason why this opportunity is there in terms of the prayer and close up the shots is that it gives those an opportunity to pray who want to pray. And then those who don't want to pray, they can't use the fact that they were not able to stop at some point in their day to pray. They have no excuse now. The massage are open, the businesses are shut down, and for, for 15 or 20 minutes, you're not allowed to do any business. There shouldn't be any shop open. We shouldn't even see the lights on until the prayer is over. So no one has an excuse. So if you're not already praying regularly, can, can making Hydra help you with that? Depends on your situation. It depends on, you know, if you don't have a masjid in your city or you're too far away from the masjid, you live too far, or the kind of job that you are on, maybe you work a really dirty job, okay? And in, in, in your environment, it's not conducive for prayer. Maybe you had to do a lot of washing up and cleaning up and your clothes are all, you know, they have, uh, the, the clothes are just not clean, okay? So you're not in your best state to make the prayer, okay? Or as you, if you are, as I mentioned before, you are, you know, unmindful of the prayer. It's not gonna help you. It's not gonna fix it. It can help. Hearing the event every day is a daily reminder that you should pray. But it, but if you're not akin to praying like that, and you are, you know, lax of days ago, you know, with the prayer, sometimes yes, sometimes no, that's not going to fix your situation. Hydra's not going to fix it. The third thing Hydra is not going to fix is misbehaving Muslim children. Your daughter doesn't want to wear hijab. Your son... He, he can grow facial hair. He just keeps shaving it. He has bad habits. He listens to music. He cusses. You even caught him a couple of times. You know, you smell something on his bed that you could swear was hummer, beer, something. Okay. He's got bad friends, bad influences. Okay. Making Hydra is not going to fix that. I'm sorry to tell you. You may think that by changing your environment, you change the access that your children have. And this is true. You definitely will change the access for a while because human beings will seek out the thing that they desire. So if you really want it, eventually you're going to find it. The shaitan is going to point you in directions and whisper to you or whisper to people, right? And you're going to find that thing that you like getting into. Hydra is not going to fix that. Hydra is not going to fix that. If she wasn't covering before, Hydra isn't a fix for her not covering. If she's not praying, Hydra is not a fix for that. If she had boyfriends, Hydra is not a fix for that. It's not going to fix that situation. If the boy has a girlfriend or he's watching, sorry, he's watching porn, you know, Hydra is not going to fix that, you guys. If he already has an aversion to praying or, you know, uh, being in the masjid, he don't like going to Islamic events, he would rather hang out, you know, on a Saturday night than be with his pop, his abu, or, or her um, and you're in the masjid trying to, you know, learn some, 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 some of this, get some of this fruit from these trees of knowledge. If they're not already prone to be like that, Hijra won't necessarily fix. Now, I'm not saying that it won't help and it won't be beneficial. It will be for those who Allah has mercy on. If Allah decides that, you know, this hijra is going to affect your daughter in such a way that she says, you know what, I'm really, really not in a good headspace. You know, I, I do have a chance now being in Egypt, being in Bahrain, being in Kuwait, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Pakistan. Take your pick of the Muslim roulette wheel, roulette wheel. And her being there has influenced her. She said, you know what, I'm going to start up. OK, it can definitely help because probably where you are now you don't have many examples alhamdulillah in the darul islam in the lands of the muslims darul muslim you have darul muslimin you have plenty of examples of people covering walking across in front of you but you also have some examples of people who are not covering some people don't grow a beard they shave their beard all the time so you have a mixture of both hijra is not going to necessarily fix that it can help but it's not going to fix that Hydra, that's the third thing, right? Hydra is not going to uh, make you more sorry, more righteous. It's not going to make you more righteous. It can help, but it's not a fix. 
we have to understand there's no pill in Islam that you can take for anything. There's no magic button, okay? Because in the ma'amalu binia, okay, the actions are by the intention. What are you going for? What are you making hijra for? Are you making hijra for Allah and his messenger? If that is the case, then you're going to get that. If you went for some other reason to better your life, to marry some woman, and we hear this a lot, you know, in the in the Hindu groups, you know, well, let me just marry a local person, you know, and then I can get citizenship. And it, it, be careful, because you might be polluting the Nia for your Hijra. You're not going to get some woman in marriage, and if you are, Allah made a special provision for that. If that is what you're going for, then your Hijra was for that, and you'll get that. You'll find that bent. And she's going to be pretty and all this other stuff that you're looking for, everything you're looking for. But you're not under the umbrella of the Nia of Hidra because you went, your purpose of going was for something else. It was to get a woman in marriage. It was to do business. See, the, the Hadith covers this stuff. The Hadith covers this stuff because Allah is al-Hakim. So Allah knows if you're going to go to, to, to secure the bag with the Muslims, let me get a, a, a Muslim business or an Islamic business or a business I can do with Muslims. That way I can stay in Atlanta. If that's the reason that you're going, I don't, that's different from I want to make Hidra for Allah and his messenger, but I got to find a way to support myself. That's different. I want to make Hidra for Allah and his messenger. And along the way, you know, I hope to maybe meet a good Muslim brother or a good Muslim sister to marry. I'm not going for that, but I would welcome that opportunity. I would welcome that if it happens. You understand the difference? You're going for the hijra. You're going for Allah's messenger to strengthen the deen, to put yourself in an Islamic situation where you don't have to worry about strife and about the harm that you get from the kufar. That you can go to to a place where there are people who are like minded like you. They think like you. They walk and talk and dress and act and behave like you. They have the same set of morals and ideals and values and traditions like you do. They all want that ultimate goal to go to Jannah and to be saved from the hellfire from Allah. Na'udhu They've all got that same goal. That's why you're going. So that you can do that, do, you can put into uh, implementation the ayah where Allah says, save your, oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones. Save yourselves and your family. Come on, y'all. This environment is not conducive to you. Everything you see in front of you in this city, in this country, in this municipality, in this area, in this village, in this locale, in this countryside, on this farm, in these mountains, wherever you are, is the opposite of what Allah is pleased with. And I am responsible for you. I need to take us out of this environment and put us in an environment where we have more opportunities to obey Allah, more opportunities to please Allah, more opportunities to make Allah happy, where Allah can facilitate for us the doing of good deeds, where we can take deeds and we can be like those people, those, those people who were trapped in the cave. When they ask Allah by the most purest action that they've ever done, if this was for your sake, grant me such and such. I wonder, we want to be in a situation where we can perform those deeds so that later when we make this tawassal and we uh, and we ask Allah for the things that we want, we can now, we have a collection of deeds that we've done. Here, we can't really get that. So I need to get you guys out of here and provide you a better environment, a safer environment. My wife can wear niqab and nobody's going to say anything to her. Nobody's going to harass her because it's 50 women down the street or in the mall wearing niqab as well. You don't have to worry about putting a thobe on, except in some countries, but you, and for the most part, you don't have to worry about putting a thobe on and then everybody looking at you with a side eye or the police giving you the side eye. So Hydra is not going to make you necessarily righteous. It's not going to fix something in you that wasn't there before if you're having problems in your marriage the hydra is not going to fix that if you didn't fix it before you left if your children are not obeying Allah and they have a and the dunya has a stronger pull on them being in Dara hydra is not going to necessarily fix that it can help but it's not a fix if you didn't try your best, and if they haven't, by Allah's mercy, start to evolve to the point where they are less attracted to the doing to the dunya and becoming more attracted to the deen. And, and uh, of course, if you're watching this and you're not a Muslim, I don't mean the way of fanaticism. 
I don't mean the way of what they call fundamentalism. I mean, people who have said, you know what, I can, I can see that, you know, I'm not going in the right direction here. The one who created me doesn't like this kind of stuff. And I know it. I need to get myself together. I need to put myself in a situation where I can do or I can find out those things that my creator wants from me so that I can obey him in that. And so that the day when I meet him, because I will meet him and he will ask me about all of this, at least I'll have some kind of footing possibly to stand on. Okay. Hydra is not a fix. It's a, it's a guide. It's a motivator. It puts you on the path, okay? It facilitates lots of things that you didn't have available in your country living amongst the Kufar. But the element, that element is still there. So what will, Hydra will enhance. So if you fixed your marriage and you had some really long, well, not necessarily long, but you know, you had some very um, purposeful, intentional talks with your spouse, and you've identified things in the marriage. And if there was blame, then you took the blame. And if there was no blame, then you move on. You've identified the problems. You've identified the things that are causing you strife. And you've identified solutions. It's not just coming up with, well, this is the problem. And I don't like this. And you did this. And you did this. No, 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 no. Now you've done that. But now you've identified solutions to fix the problem. You have enacted these solutions. And now you've seen that there's improvement in your marriage. And then you make Hydra. And that will enhance that. You see, because now Shaitan's influence has gotten weaker on the married couple, because that's 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 the 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 thing that the, the Shayateen, they love to cause problems between the married men and women from the Muslims. If they can break them up, separate them, get them to argue with each other, not trust each other, all kind of even to the point where they get to murder them. OK, if if you're able to fix your situation with your spouse and you guys are on another uh, on another plateau now. You are on a different level. You're turning a new chapter now. Okay. Then the Hydra will, it will enhance that. If your children have decided, you know, slowly, because Allah guides who he wants. So your children have decided, you know what? Mommy, how does, how does hijab look on me? Does it look pretty? Does what's, 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 what, does, oh, mashallah. Yeah, Binti, you beautiful. Mashallah. Sometimes our kids, you know, if mommy wears niqab, they come, mommy, look, 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 look. I'm like mommy. I'm like mommy. The influence is starting to wear on them. It's starting to pay off in a good way. Your son, you know, he's like, Abby, I, I want a thobe like that one. You want a thobe? Okay, I'll get you a thobe. Abby, can I go to the master with you? <laughs> yeah, man, say less. Come on, let's go. And now it's, it's, it's slam is starting to, 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 to slowly grow in their heart. It's, it's roots. Are, are being established and it's slowly blossoming in their heart and they start to get more and more in tune without losing aspects of the dunya because you don't it's not always an absolute situation in islam it's never an absolute we take from the dunya what allah has written for us because allah created this dunya for the believers specifically so there is nothing wrong with partaking in it it's just that there are priorities and the doing it doesn't take priority over the gene. Your children, as they start to mature, they're starting to realize that. They're starting to care less and less about the peer pressure, what their friends think about them, and so forth. And, you know, Amatullah has said, I'm going to wear this hijab. I don't care if y'all laugh. I don't care. I don't care. Khaled is starting to wear his stole, and he's wearing it above the ankles. He's wearing his pants above the ankles. And he don't care who laughs at him now. Because his idea of trying to get closer to Allah, that's more important to him than what his friends are gonna to say to him at school. If you have a situation where, you know, you're not so righteous, but then, you know, slowly you start reading a little bit more Quran, you start doing some good deeds, and you just feel good about that. You're able to make the salat on time a few times and it makes you feel good. Like Rasulullah, he said, whoever, whosoever good deeds please him or make him happy and his evil deeds cause him anguish or sorrow, he is a believer. I'll come and call it Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi or as the Rasul Sallallahu said. So you're starting to evolve in that. All of those things, Hijra is going to enhance that. Then when you get where you're going, it's like it's like you shifted from second gear to like fourth gear. Now I'm, I'm in a I'm in a I'm in the right headspace now. I'm in a different headspace now. And now I have an opportunity. And then from this, Allah starts to open your eyes to things you didn't see before. 
Allah starts to open your ears to things you didn't hear before. Allah starts pointing you on paths and in directions that you didn't know that you could go down. You didn't know there was a path to this thing down here. So like what, what Allah says, whoever fears Allah, Allah will make for him a makhraj, a way out of his difficulty and provide from him from sources he did not imagine. He didn't know. He never saw the, 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 the nirma that Allah gave him coming from that direction, from that person, from that situation. He never saw it. But because of his fear of Allah and his iman is growing, when he makes hijra, Allah enhances that. That's what Hidra does. It can't fix your problems. You have to fix and work on your problems beforehand to at least get it to a degree where it's manageable, where it's manageable. And then the Hidra, by Allah's permission and his mercy, will come along and enhance that. So I really wanted to shed some light on that because there are a lot of Muslims who think that this is a fix-all. It's like a, a one-shot pill, one pill that you take, a magic pill, for lack of a better term. You take this, you do this action, everything's going to be okay. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. So I, uh, I hope that you got some benefit from the video. If you can do me one last favor. If you know someone that is on Twitter or uh, Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or any of the other social media platforms, and they are also trying to make Hydra, please share this video with them so that they can get these tips and these advice and so forth and benefit from them.